What's going out there, YouTube? Cecil 0320 representing JVS. So, this is my official review. I'm proud to say for the Justice League. I was actually able to watch the movie in a fan screening just yesterday on uh, on Monday. I was able to go to the press screening today, and um, I gotta say, I went into the the movie with a lot of anxiety, social anxiety and worry and concern but I gotta say even watching it a second time I enjoyed it even more and this is gonna be my review but before I do this I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you off the gate I'm gonna give this movie an 8.5 out of 10 and I'm gonna dissect the reasons why why it's not more why is it I don't think it should be anything less and why that you can go into this movie understanding and knowing that you're gonna have a good time that you're gonna actually if you're a DC fan or a superhero fan you're gonna get something out of it that you've been wanting for quite some time this is 20 years in the making anybody that were fans of the original Justice League cartoons or the Super Friends or even the newer Justice League War you're gonna get something out of this and you're gonna pick it and you're gonna like this is what I've wanted for such a long time um, I will leave a disclaimer. I will not tell you anything about Superman at all um, because in some shape or form he is involved in this movie. His presence is throughout most of the entire movie, but I will not say anything about him in this review. But wait for my spoiler review and I'll tell you a little bit more about that to come. But if you are a Superman fan, this will very much so service your thoughts and your feelings about what he represents and his ideal and what everything that you wanted to know about his meaning that all the heroes think about him so that's a good thing to actually go in but let's go ahead and break this movie apart so as far as the VFX as far as the cinematography and especially as far as the score I kinda have been all over the place in my thoughts and interpretations of them before I ended up watching the movie. I actually listened to the soundtrack before watching it. Normally I always do that. Um, the soundtrack to me that they've done for Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman and of course the Dark Knight series with Hans Zimmer is monumentally epic. I think it wasn't it wasn't represented well and it wasn't it received with the recognition I think they really truly deserved and when I was sitting there listening to this with Danny Elfman, even though I love 1989 score by Danny Elfman, I love what he did with, you know, the Sam Raimi score. I was listening to this, it was just all over the place. And I was like, I'm hearing, you know, some John Williams here. I'm hearing some, you know, 1989 Batman. I'm hearing some Spider-Man. I'm hearing some Avengers. I was like, what is this, you know? But I will say that when you actually see the film, you will understand why the soundtracks feel so contrived and all over the place. It fits the mold and the scope of this movie, every scene. It felt as though actually, when they went and did all the reshoots, and when they did everything, they went and had him come in and make sense of every single positional thing that happens. And it moves with the beat of how the soundtrack works, which is actually really good. The VFX, some people are gonna be really iffy on because there are certain things that I think that got polished later on in terms of the reshoots. But for me, when I think about characters like Cyborg and all the underwater sequences with Aquaman and even just some of the fight sequences and some of the things that the Flash can do, it was still really good. I have to give the VFX at least an 8.5 or an 8 out of 10. Like, it was really good. There were some moments with the villain Steppenwolf that I felt that, you know, could have been serviced a little bit better. But when you see the close-up shots of Stephen Wolf, specifically this one moment, you know, when he grabs this missile, it looks very good. So I'm actually all behind that. Cinematography is very Zack Snyder-esque. You can feel the... One of the things that I also was worried about was, was this going to feel like the man that started this in so many respects. Even though it started with Christopher Nolan and him in Man of Steel, you know, everybody labels him as the blueprint, the glue, so to speak, that was the blueprint for 300, was the blueprint for Watchmen, was the blueprint for Man of Steel. And he's gotten a lot of flack, but I gotta say, I am a lover of Zack Snyder. And you can feel his imagery all over, his vision throughout most of the film. And even um, the subtleties of how they pick 
each one of the character moments when they are actually in their element oh my gosh some of these action moments are legendary when it comes to the superhero genre some of them you will never forget and when you rewatch it again the second time i watched it again i was like ah this is just as epic the second time and so from that standpoint you know you have something that you're gonna take in and you're never gonna forget i will say that as far as the dialogue as far as the moments where there's a close up panned out moment, you might have Batman or Bruce and Diana have a conversation or Flash and Cyborg having a conversation. And that banter and that, not just comedic, because there's a lot of comedy throughout, but that open dialogue that's really connecting, I do feel Josh's impressions there. And I think that he was one of the ones that worked out a lot of the dialogue, but the thing about it is that Zack Snyder allowed him openly to help out with that even before he left, and so he wanted him to finish out. So it's, it's a perfect blend of dialogue, impression, and vision between the two directors, which I actually feel throughout this film. Now let's talk about the characters and the actors. I thought the actors committed to their characters. Jason Momoa, you got <laughs> Ezra Miller, you got um, and I almost said Zack Snyder for a second there. Uh, Gal Gadot, you got um, so many different actors. J.K. Simmons, um, shoot, um, Amber Heard, Amy Adams. Heck, they even had um, Connie Nelson back, and of course, Ben Affleck. And to be quite honest with you, all the heroes nail it. But the one that, for me, I didn't expect to just rally behind, which to me is the meat of the emotional appeal to this movie. If his emotional moments weren't there and they weren't delivered well, I'm talking about Ray Fisher and Cyborg. He, to me, did such a great job. He, he nailed those emotional moments because half of his face, you know, they, they even talked about this in the behind the scenes that he was basically wearing, you know, some pajamas the whole entire time. And then half his face from this point on, it's just him expressing. And his expect his expressions, his movements, his dialogue, the monotoneness, the I don't know about how they actually did the VFX as far as him acting and moving robotic, but the dialogue and the delivery for his facial mannerisms were perfect and I felt that impression of his character because his character in and of itself is a tortured character. It doesn't look to himself as a human anymore. And then you got all these other kind of characters in, you know, Jason Momoa's Aquaman, who's just kind of this loner, more gruffy than what Batman would be, which is very different for that character, but he nails it. Gal Gadot is definitely a warrior still. Like, if you loved her in Wonder Woman, you're going to love the moments that she has in this one. Action and in dialogue and progression. And they actually move her character on a little bit more than they actually did with uh, Wonder Woman, from Wonder Woman, I should say. Um, ben Affleck is Batman. Hated him or love him. He is this generation's Batman. I don't know if he's going to continue on, you know, with the movies coming and moving forward. But in this film, I was like, this is my Batman. You know, not just like, because I actually dug him in BVS. I didn't have any problem with him in BVS. A lot of people did. But it was like some of the moments I was like, I've seen this in the animated series. I've seen these kind of moments where Batman goes and does something and then he instantly kind of regrets it, but he knows that that's what needs to be done to get to the goal, to get to where we have to go to win, you know what I'm saying? And that happens in dialogue throughout the comics, throughout the anime series, and if you actually even looked at the new Justice League War like I had talked about before, a lot of that Batman is kind of the same as this one. And I really appreciate what Ben Affleck was able to do. And I pray that he's able to continue to come back. Again, I can't talk about anything about Superman. <clears throat> Henry Cavill was there, but his presence is felt. That's all I can say. Um, as far as the villain in Stephen Wolf, I'll say this. He is a decent villain. He's not a bad villain by any means, but there are going to be some, I guess that's a good segue, there's going to be some story progression in terms of what the villain is doing, why he's doing it, that does get explained in exposition very well and through flashbacks and through certain things, but 
it needed a little more progression for an understanding standpoint. I understood certain dialogue moments that only a comic book person would actually know, and I can only talk about that in the spoiler review. But even if you're a consumer and you're sitting there watching, like, okay, I see where this is going, but what, what is the consequence of this? Why did he do this? Why did this happen with this? You know, because I mean, some of the stuff he does is really messed up. Um, but you can't rally behind him because there's not enough meat holding him up afloat necessarily. And so that is something I'll talk about more on my cr critical side of this review. But he was a decent villain. And in the grand scheme of things, as far as the story, this is about a world that has lost their hope, they've lost their hero, and they need people to pick up the reins and move. And they do that from the first act and alone. They show you why. They show you what these people, what these metahumans, what these, you know, heroes have that the world desperately needs, even though they can't see it themselves. And throughout their progression, you know, they really form a team that is a rallying team. Like, you will be behind them. You will be clapping. You will be laughing. Um, there are some heartfelt moments. There's some, like, critical moments as far as dialogue between some of, each and one of them. Like, there's, there's some moments where they collide and interact kind of, uh, I would say, Avengers-esque in so many different ways. But this is very different from what the Avengers tried to do in that this one, I came out of it like I want to see every single one of their standalones moving forward. So for me, that is a win on the DC side. I will talk about a lot more in my critique review um, that I'll also release out tomorrow. Hopefully you guys checked out my man Lucas's uh, interview and discussion as well as some other people's interviews and discussions about the film but all in all I am a fan of the superhero genre I love Marvel I love DC I love X-Men I love Fox and in for me I just wanted this movie to be good and that is what this actual movie is and again I stand behind my 8.5 out of 10 there are some nitpicks here or there um, in the progression of what they could have done more with the villain um the time like it is an exact two hours they could have added a little bit more but it wasn't necessary for the grand scheme of what they were trying to do and the impression of it so it's more so nitpicks back and forth um but i will go into more nitpicks in my critique but all i can say for you guys if you really want to know is this movie worth your money i think you will actually be able to enjoy it with your kids with your family and you should definitely go and check out the Justice League. I'll talk to you guys a bit later. Keep it locked. JVS, we ain't gonna stop. Make sure you stay tuned for the critic review, the discussion later on this weekend, and the spoiler review. Peace, guys.